strange to see that little of a movie. Does it mm -hmm. bring back the desert? Do you miss the desert? Do you ever go back? No, I, I've never been back. Uh, Two years out of your life, was not, it? <laughs> not too advisable at the moment, is it? Uh, uh, uh -huh. Two years ago, yes, yeah, so I was just thinking, uh, there, there was a, uh, I, I, it brings back a lot of memories for me, and I've not seen the film ever, all the way through. What? No. Why not? Well, I don't find it profitable to see. To see yourself no. uh, all evening? No. Uh, Gee, but I, I did have a curious experience on that, and this is an experience that I think is not shared by many people. David Lean has ever said to me at the end of the two years, uh, Peter, I, we want to pick up one or two little bits and pieces. And we went into a studio and uh, do face this and face that and take off the Arab hood. And, you know. and then when I saw this particular sequence, um, I, it was a scene at a well. And I was looking there and I was 27. Mm -hmm. And then it cut to my friend uh, Fred Cairo Fred, Omar Sharif, um, mm -hmm. and back to me, and I was 29. And then back to Omar, and back to me, and I was 27 again. They edited it together that way? Yeah, he needed a shot to put in the middle. So I went two years. And it was quite odd, because I mean, to, I'm sure to the audience, generally, they didn't notice, but I did, it was haggard. And, <laughs> <laughs> what had you done to fall apart in those two years? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> But I, I, I'm sorry, but I noticed that shot of Audrey Hepburn and things that you had there. Yeah. Such a relief after Richard Burton. I, I had to fall in love with Richard Burton and, and a camel, then I got Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> <Richard Burton. laughs> Called upon to do strange things in your mm -hmm. career. Say, so, I just got to ask you this one thing, and I'd like to talk about Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> oh, oh, they're about to blast uh, some, some part of town. That was that whistle we heard. Uh, um, how do you guys do it? You Irish actors who, who can stay up all night knocking back the sauce and go on the set the next morning and give a brilliant Academy Award winning performance. Stamina. Is that it? <laughs> it's a miracle to me. I mean, if I have two jars of, or cups of Ovaltine, I can't do the show. Uh, do, do you do that, or is that exaggerated? Do you, do you stay up all night, and has anyone ever stayed up all night and then reported to work the morning, the next morning, the way you and Burton are supposed to be able to do? I was just thinking, uh, we have this reputation, a few of us. Uh, and one day, uh, Peter Finch, a man I admire enormously, uh, who is also accredited with these uh, gifts, uh, <laughs> and we were looking at a painting and having an argument about whether this um, particular piece of paint had been put on with a palette knife or a thumb. Mm -hmm. And Finchie said to me, he said, uh, we we're like a couple of rather dusty uh, academicians discussing pigmentation. And he said, you know, son, he said, we shouldn't be caught doing this. He said, oh, we're finished. We, sh we should be out raising hell. <laughs> ruining your, you yeah. were ruining your reputation. Yeah. 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 But uh, can it be done to stay up all night boozing and, and then go to work the next well, day and act? <laughs> A, well, if it's true, I mean, I'm not going to deny it. Please don't. Uh, uh, and uh, anyone who knows me wouldn't dare vindicate what anything I do. Uh, ignorance may, if they want to asperse it, I don't care. But if, in fact, uh, I did do this, say, on a film like Lion in Winter, yes. if I was, uh, uh, if I made a friendship which I know will endure, both professionally and, and personally, with Kate Hepburn. Mm -hmm. If at the same time I could cast it, uh, work night and day on it, play one of the hugest roles I've ever encountered, and be footless, raven, drunk at the same time, I must be titanic, so I'm not going to do, do, deny that at all. No. True. I see, because it would be immodest to claim to be able to do all of that. Yeah, it would. Mind you, there is one little thing. Richard Burton and I, once we were filming Beckett, and uh, we were being almost choir boy-like, we were so angelic, and we were both on the wagon, and we'd finished our sequence, and then unannounced a 
him or me. We didn't tell each other. We both went on an enormous bat. Uh, and then they found that they, there was a little bit of the sequence missing, which involved no words, but it, it, it needed our physical presence. And so search parties were sent out, and I, I was found uh, somewhere or other. Uh, at three of the th in the morning, I put into a car and take to the studio. And they found Richard in a different part of the town, and he was shoved in the car. Uh, and I got to the makeup room at about 7.30, and I was 110. And I said, do the best you can, Charlie. And he did fine things with ice and one thing or another. By about half past eight, I was about 65. Uh, and four or five cups of black coffee later and recovering. And I was feeling quite good. I was at about 50. And I walked out of the dressing room door and coming down the corridor was the oldest Welshman I've ever seen. In my life. <laughs> And it was Richard. <laughs> 140, eh? Yeah. yeah. Oh. And that's why in that movie you're two years older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. We, uh, we have to take a message. When we come back, we'll see a bit of you and Catherine Hepburn from that film. We'll be right back. We have a, a brief clip from uh, Lion and Winter. And uh, I gather Catherine Hepburn is somebody you'd be happy to run into on the street again, or professionally. Didn't she sort of, uh, uh, there's a story that went around for a time that she came and saw you in a play in London before you were known, before Lawrence of Arabia. And that shortly after that, wherever you went, people said, I heard about you from Catherine Hepburn. Is that vaguely the line of the, mm, it, how it went? Totally she... true. I have a daughter called Kate. Mm -hmm. My named after Kate Hepburn. Yes, I was in a, a play in London. And, uh, uh, no, here we go again. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. As you know, you, you were an actor. Uh, well. <laughs> dressing rooms aren't all they should be. Mm -hmm. And uh, bathrooms are usually quite some distance away. And uh, it was after the show, and uh, I'm looking for a refined way of saying I was uh, Let's see, uh, and, uh, maybe I can help you with that. Uh, uh, what uh, about, um, I was putting the cat out. Yeah. That... Uh, and a voice said, my name is Kate Hepburn. <laughs> and I, I had to do, pretend to do fine things with a washing machine. <laughs> and I was introduced to her and met her, and she, she was, in fact, I think, directly responsible for me getting the part of Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. But she did discover you doing this peculiar... Well, she, I don't think she ever... <laughs> and then went around raving about you. Um... <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I've she arrived in, uh, in, in Ireland three weeks ago, unannounced. Yeah. And my, one of my daughters thought it was the local gypsy woman coming up the stairs. <laughs> Kate, what? Wait, I mean, I, she really carries something with her. What can I say? I mean, I, I say all the cliches in the world. I mm. have, I mean, I love her. I, I have nothing but total admiration and affection for her, and I really do. I, I will do anything for her, and I, oh, everything that anybody says about her is quite true. That, um, she's one of the most remarkable women I know, and. Uh, Oh dear, what can I say? I just. Re oh, there's one thing people don't know. She has a, a right hook. In the boxing sense? In, in the boxing sense. Risk? She once arrived in my caravan while we were making the line in winter. And she said, You Irish mutt. And, and took a great dig at me. And I, I ducked that one. She said, I've worked with the biggest Irish mutt of all times. That was Spencer Tracy, but you are a bigger Irish mutt. And, I ducked duck that one again, and then finally she got me with the third one right on the ear. And I, uh, I don't know why. I do know why. And I didn't know why at the time, but I, I dressed up. I put blood on my ear and a splint and walked onto the set. And, uh, and she said, never mind, pig. She calls me the pig. P-I-G? Uh, P-I-G. I, oh. I only hit the people I love. So I said, I recommended to her that she should hate me for the rest of the picture. At least till the movie's over. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. What had you done? Um, 
Well, I, I think she thought that the makeup man, if she was doing a close up, was in fact in my dressing room having a nip. He probably was. <laughs> Little sherbet. <laughs>